Well, it was back on June 8th that a news conference was held that shocked almost all of the Baltimore area. After four years on the job, Police Commissioner Michael Harrison abruptly announced he was resigning from his position. And after that press conference, well, questions and speculation have been swirling ever since. Our Denise Koch joins us now in the studio tonight after an hour long exclusive interview with both Harrison and two other top leaders in Baltimore City. Denise? Well, Rick, a question a lot of people have been asking ever since that time was Harrison forced out of office? Well, WJZ and Justin Fenton from our media partner, the Baltimore Banner, got some answers today in this exclusive interview with the former commissioner, the acting commissioner, and Mayor Brandon Scott. In an interview well, you will only see on WJZ tonight, Harrison insists that leaving was his choice entirely. I was not forced out. In mid-May, I had uh, prayed about the future of my career, and my wife and I were talking about it. I began to assess all of the accomplishments that we made. You saw me put out a four-year progress report. And so when I th look back over my career, when I look back over the four years that I was here, it, it was readily apparent to me that we had accomplished many, if not most, of the goals that we set. You had seen a crime reduction, especially in violent crime, with murder and shootings on the decrease, not just in the Western District where we experienced it last year, but, but across the city. And the momentum was in our favor. And I had prepared, thirdly, I had prepared leaders, been spending time cultivating and developing leaders like Commissioner Worley, like the other deputy commissioners, like our colonels and lieutenant colonels, sending them to the best leadership schools America has to offer. I was convinced that the time was now because with all of this, you just heard me say, you. You can only pass the torch when you are not in crisis. Did you try and talk him out of it? I could see in his eyes that there was no cut talking him out of it, even if, I wanted, if I, even if I wanted to. The commissioner says he gave 90 days notice, but by June 8th, it was clear rumors were circulating within the department and they needed to go public. It was apparent then that we should probably transition sooner rather than later so that we could protect the morale, which leads to performance, which leads to whether we can continue the momentum that we had gained or we'd lose it. Once the rumors and the questions and things got, we felt it was important for us to make the move then uh, because what was the worst possible outcome for me is for the residents of this city, Justin, to learn about it from you all. Commissioner Harrison says he gave the mayor a number of names from within the department of who should succeed him, but they quickly settled on Worley, who got the call at 11.30 p.m. the very night before we were all told. The commissioner had called me and told me that he was leaving. Um, we had heard the rumors, everybody heard, had heard the rumors, um, and we didn't know if he was going to leave, but we knew that he had set several of us up to take over the agency in a seamless transition. And I still talk to Commissioner Harrison, even if he's 10 years down the road, I will seek his advice for things because he's been a police commissioner for nine years. Now, acting Commissioner Worley says that it helps that he's from Baltimore and that he has spent 25 years in the department, a department that right now, he says, has a serious morale problem. What's wrong with the morale? Um, morale is down. It's, it, it's down. I mean, there, we're 500 and some officers short. Uh, you, you brought up that we, we were drafting people and forcing them to work. We have to stop that. And the only way we stop that is build the department back up to where, where it was. 2013, we had 2,981 officers. We have just over 2,000 now. So we're 900 officers short from 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we're 400, 500 officers short from five years ago. So those are numbers that you don't build up in one day or one year. Those are going to take time. And time is working together is keeping people here. Um, and forcing everyone to basically recognize what a great department this is, how much change we've made under Commissioner Harrison. Now, all of this change comes as the city has just experienced the worst mass shooting in its history, of course. It is an experience that has shaken the community and these men. We heard some police transmission that we were able to uh, get audio of where there's an officer who says there are eight or nine hundred people here. Seems to me if you hear there's eight or nine hundred people anywhere gathered, you know you need more, you need more personnel immediately. And, and that's exactly what we want to look at. We're doing a comprehensive after action. Um, D.C. Milan San, who oversees our compliance bureau, who's overseen by the consent decree, Department of Justice, and Judd Bredar. 
Um, he's going to put this together. He's already consulted with Las Vegas, Orlando, and Aurora for how they're going to do their after action. So he's going to pull every piece of data that we have, um, radio transmissions, cell phones, text messages, every, everything that we have to see who knew, um, what they did once they found out, and what was, done, what was the result of what they've done. I thought of you. I thought it must have been, or was it, difficult to know that this was going on and for the first time you were not the one who had to answer the call. It was difficult. Um, it was shocking. It was horrifying. Um, and I had to imagine what the commissioner is now going through, what the mayor is going through, what the surviving victims and the family members, what they're going through. I probably felt a little bit of what Commissioner Worley was feeling, just knowing what he's out there having to handle. What was uh, that? What would those feelings be? Just, you know, I need, you know, answers. How do I get the answers to what happened, how it happened, why it happened, um, and how do we not let this happen again? The Brooklyn one um, really, really bothers me because I lived in that community. Uh, a lot of people don't realize I lived in Brooklyn on 5th Street from 2002 until 2014. So I was only a couple blocks from where that incident happened. And the sheer magnitude of 30 people being shot is, is something that I've never seen in my career. I also have to recognize the work that our men and women did after. Mm -hmm. um, we'll show you a video of an officer working with the community. The officer, and I'll get into a little detail, the officer has gloves on and he has blood on his hands. He had to ask a community member to push his button on his mic so he could talk because he was the only one there rendering aid to the individual who he put a uh, bandage on his chest and his back, rushed him to Harbor Hospital, and it saved a young man's life. So tomorrow night, Baltimore City Council's Public Safety Committee will be holding a hearing on that mass shooting in Brooklyn, and we'll be sure to bring you the latest from that hearing on air and online. And it was a phenomenal interview by you. Great job by the team behind the scenes of making this happen, getting all three of them to sit down in the same room because there have been so many unanswered questions and having them addressed for the first time is a huge deal for this yeah, city. People have been calling for transparency, transparency, um, and I think today they were, they were making all three of them, particularly the mayor, to be as transparent as possible. By the way, it came out today um, in a question by Justin Fenton that the former commissioner will be paid through the middle of August per contract, mm -hmm. um, and he is still offering advice and consulting and taking phone calls from the interim commissioner as needed. And unfortunately, look, we've been around here a long time. This is a position that has been a revolving door, a position that needs consistency, stability right now. Uh, one thing you can't argue is how much Commissioner Harrison cared about this city. But these numbers, as uh, Commissioner Worley mentioned, 500 officers short from five years ago, 900 plus from 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is not a quick fix. No, it's a, not a quick fix at all. And um, I think Commissioner Harrison, as you heard, will be advising all along. There's much more to WJZ and the Baltimore Banners, hour long ex exclusive interview with these three men. We have a lot more, as you can imagine. For more, visit the Baltimore Banners website tomorrow morning. And investigative reporter Justin Fenton's full story will be there. And then stay with WJZ. Our coverage will continue all day tomorrow, starting at 4.30 a.m. And Denise, phenomenal job. Thank you.